we're doing a round two recap for our creative Minecraft building tournament that we're hosting on PediaGaming.com. Um, supported also by Xbox providing the pricing. So uh, if you missed last week's week one recap of the tournament, um, we had 12 contenders overall, five advanced to round two, which is what we're recapping today. We're going to be going through each of their submissions and then we'll be talking to the judges in a pre recorded segment. Uh, hearing their thoughts on each of the creations and then finally announcing the grand prize winner as i said the prizes are provided by xbox thank you so much xbox the grand prize is an xbox series s console and a full year of xbox game pass ultimate uh, that is access to the full game pass library on both pc and xbox so that's super duper exciting please welcome back for me janie laney founder of black minecraft theodora hex content creator for minecraft online and vtuber zoe hill welcome judges <laughs> good to see you all again i'm so excited to run through these round two creations round one was a blast we saw um there was 12 total submissions and five lucky lucky and hardworking creative folks made through to round two charmed 666 um now i've given a tentative name myself to some of these creations what they've done is they've expanded with ruins beneath their crash site and kind of expanded on their narrative. So why don't we begin with Janie Laney. I'd love to hear what you liked about Charm's additional build. All right. So hi, guys. I just want to say hi again. Hi. Um, so I really did like this build. Um, the first thing that I do want to point out was that we did see a little bit more of story progression. Um, just based upon the actual build itself. Uh, so for those of you guys who do not know, um, a lot of these awesome builders decided to go ahead and give us a backstory of their builds. Well, what Charm decided to do also was to implement some more signs around the area that gave us a lot of clues as to like what's happening. So right now, um, we basically are being given a set of notes trying to figure out what exactly was going on with this place before we had landed there. And I really did want to point that out in the build. That was something I really, really, really did enjoy. I wanted to see more stuff going on with the purple -pur block. I, I really thought that we were going to get like more per per block uh or something like that but i i really did enjoy this storyline i really did it was really go. fun notice to clarify because i don't actually i'm not super familiar with the per per block is that's what is that what's used it's on purple. the tail end of the of the crashed pod is that what that is yes uh yes okay, yeah cool. yeah all right that makes block. sense Purple. Yeah, perhaps <laughs> perhaps they could have salvaged parts of that ship yeah. elsewhere in their build, right? Yeah, that would be progression involving the pod. Very cool idea, Janie. Thank you. For me, what Chom's build really gave me is kind of like an adventure act, like an adventure game. It felt like instead of it being them who was there with the game, they had a whole bunch of stuff, and then we came across it ourselves, and we're the ones trying to figure out what happened here. So it kind of seems like a development in and of itself, like they developed on top of ruins and now it seems like it's like our turn is what the vibe that I got. So I like that implement and the signs, you were right, Janie, the signs were an awesome touch because that also kind of added to the element. The only thing that I would say that um, made me deduct a little bit of points was the pictures, I guess. It, so you could tell the builds were good, but the way that the pictures were so like situated, it kind of looked messy. Like okay. the builds are good, but just the angles of the pictures doesn't capture the environment well enough. Sometimes there's a bit of a barrier there, right? So thank you, yeah. Theodora. Um, Zoe, I'd love to hear what you liked about Charm's build. Round two. Just the detail that went into some of the uh, projects, like how there's the... Uh the cobwebs in the uh, roof in one of the pictures. Not a lot of people do that to, you know, show abandonment or whatever. The uh, the growth of the trees, since this was, what, six months? I believe time, so. I think? Uh, yeah, so six months have passed as part of their uh, post. Yeah, so showing that growth is a great touch of, you know, showing that, you know, the time has passed and all that. And the uh, the ruins down in the bottom with mm -hmm. the water flowing, I like that. And I see a detail using stairs built into a wall 
I was going to point this out to you. Do you know how hard it is to do stuff like that? It is a pain. It and is. I just like that. I like that so much. We haven't released a ton of information about the Padia fiction, but I have to say their overworld jungle area looks exactly like a region in Padia called um, Sylvan Peaks. And it also involves lots of cavernous uh, ruins and uh, cave systems and mines. So this was really on the nose for something that we haven't really released yet. So that was cool charm, thank you. So next we're going to review the creation of Aina. Now Aina continued their build and they also added a bit of narrative where uh, their character who had run away as a thief actually is reunited with some of their friends who have come to help them rebuild and help collaborate with them and it was a very kind of touching character story i really liked it so let's discuss aina's friendship restores the ruins build that's the name i gave it not aina um uh let's start again with Janie laney i'd love to hear what you think of aina's round two build well so it ended differently than I expected. We yeah. ended on a good note. I was actually ready for Carnage, but we ended on a good note. So I thought that the um, the progression within the story itself was really, really nice. Um, Could have went a different way with like lasers or something, but I still really did like the friendship. Yeah. Um, what I, uh, so originally when we had saw this build um, last week, I was kind of timid on whether or not I fully liked it. Cause I was like, there's so much space, but there wasn't a lot of stuff going on. So the fact that they actually um, now have like a farm and there's, there's a lot like, like you can actually tell that time has passed and that things have grown. Um, even just working with the vegetation, it just has more of a um, we've settled in here type of vibe. It looks a little bit more a home like and I think that that does represent the friendship, uh, the rekindling of like friendships and everything like that. And it does also feel a little bit more trustworthy versus before where everything was kind of like dark and eerie and everything. Um, they also did do some down um some down in in like cavern exploring which yeah. is something that i liked because i really wanted to see what was underneath everything very cool narrative progression because like you know i agree i expected maybe the story or you know the progression of this to go somewhere else but it ended up you know moving towards a very wholesome kind of direction i felt the character um seemed to like i just feel good i feel good for them it feels like they're in a good place mentally you know what i mean that's how it feels um so uh yeah absolutely Janie. i agree um also some very creative use of blocks with with their portal in that down area that you're mentioning so thank you Janie. going in order uh theodora i'd love to hear what you think of aina's expansion on this cavernous uh crater you know ruin build Okay, I think they did a really good job with the in, um, development of the story and the development of the landscape because just like how Zoe pointed out in the other build, not only did the builds around it grow, but the um, plants around it grew as well. The tree is way bigger than what it was in the last one. And I think there's more plants as well. Yep, the glowberries grew, the bamboo, there's just more vegetation all around not just like speaking about the garden and when it comes to the story with the buildings that they've added in it just seems what's the word coherent yeah it all like fits together i loved it honestly <laughs> it was so great i loved the the depth they added to the walls instead of having just you know flat walls they used the not the block, but the actual stone brick walls yeah. to add that depth into it, which was nice. The uh, the detail for the uh, kitchen area using the uh, trap doors and item frames and the signs to add yeah. to make cabinets. It's a great attention to detail. Not a lot of people do that when they, you know, make kitchen areas. Making the aquarium to make it feel like, yes, they really moved in here because you have a pet friend. It was great. I love the the bridge. The bridge was nice. The bridge, uh, I don't know if y'all caught it, but it went from bigger blocks to smaller blocks to very thin blocks going to the middle. And then yeah. it went back to, you know, 
smaller and then bigger box. I like that. It's a great, you know, just gradient of blocks. That's so much detail. They must have used, she must have used an item in the frame to act as the handles on the cupboards. I can't describe how cool and impressive I find this. So Aina, oh. wonderful job. Yeah. It, to um, explain what she did to make a handle, it's kind of like, I did this on Black Minecraft. Okay. And for me, I used um, grinders as handles, but it looks like here they use tri uh, tripwire, those oh, tripwire okay. things. And okay. so yeah, that is a very attentive way to use that. Cause usually when people use this method, they have a mod to where it gets rid of the item frame and it just looks like a, whatever it's called. Just yeah, a straight right. up handle. Uh-huh, just a straight up handle. So that is a very creative way to go. Good job, Aina. Absolutely. We can move on to um, our next contestant. So let's do next Enchanted Kitsune. So Enchanted expanded their um, their settlement. Their, they brought the cart through this mushroom forest, right? And so what they've done is they've expanded that into a more permanent homestead, which is a very, very, very cool uh, effort. So let's discuss that, starting with Janie Laney. What do you think? Okay, kind of a fan fave here. Oh. There is a lot going on here. Originally, this for me kind of came off in a kind of like a fairy magical type of scene. I do feel like with this update, it made it look more, it made it look more inhabitable for your maybe not so magic friend that comes along and wants to learn some magic it really feels more like home before it felt more like stylish like you just didn't want to touch anything because you were kind of scared that everything was fragile like it just felt so fairy like but right now like with the progression it feels more settled in it feels more mm -hmm. home like um what i really 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 do want to point out is that now the bees are roaming around i think before the bees were not if i'm not to be mistaken because i think yeah. before you right weren't they were they tied yeah i, I think really. they were tied down yeah tied to the mm -hmm. cart i believe right and so I just kind of got the sense of, um, it's just like like when I had moved into a new place, at first my dogs would just stay in one room with me. And then as we got more comfortable, they started walking around by themselves and you know, start doing whatever it is dogs like to do. So it just, I just felt the progression of this story and I felt the progression of the actual build. Inside when it comes when it came down to their actual build, uh, before it felt more like a bungalow type of build to me. Mm -hmm. But now inside of their build, it actually looks like a home. Are um. You, so, yeah. Are we talking about like their their little mushroom house? Yes. Isn't it cute? Yes, it's it's cute because now because now it's like it's like they have an actual home, but now it's like mushroom fied like it just feels <laughs> it feels like it literally just grew and mm. I'm still trying to figure out if I need to hire them to go and make a mushroom land for me because their use of the blocks it just makes everything look like nature yes. as Minecraft players we know that no places look like this but if say for instance you're new to Minecraft that area looks so well done mm. it looks like it's a natural hobbit hole so I, I, I mean, I, I love, I love their progression with everything that they did. I love their uses of blocks. I just, I really want to live there. I want to vacation there. Thank you, Janie, for your thoughts on uh, Enchanted's expansion. It's amazing. I agree. Theodora, I'd love to hear your thoughts next on round two from Enchanted Kitsune. Okay, I completely agree with Jane, uh, Jeannie in a way that like, it's very fantastical and whimsical and it continues it. And it also does shows that, but like matured. It gives me the feeling of this, 
development is being explained to a main character of a story. So like the main character came across this village with maybe them or the ragtag group of friends, whatever, and the chief or whoever's in charge is telling them how this village came to be. Because from how it was before to what it is now, it seems like it's starting to grow a sense of community. You can tell that it's definitely magical based off of how it's built and just the environment. But then you have the other small builds that don't really have much to do with mushrooms, but can also be associated with the king, uh, area itself. And that they probably aren't magic users or they're just settling. It looks like there's merchants starting to be associated with the area, which shows a, another sign of growth of community. Thank you, Theodora. Um, mm -hmm. This is a super exciting build. So Zoe, I'd love to know your thoughts on Enchanted's round two submission. This build was otherworldly. Like, mm. honestly, this felt like to me, and this is a little shout out to the uh, Elder Scrolls fans. This feels like what Morrowind could oh. be if A, it wasn't, you know, anywhere near a volcano and B, the Telvanni weren't, you know, well, the Telvanni, let's be honest. <laughs> But it's it's so pretty to look at. I, I love it so much. Yes. And just all the detail work that they put into it, like the two trees growing and making that archway. Oh, yeah. The use of diorite for the chicken poop, which diorite does look like bird poop. It was amazing. I love the nests that she built. I also saw the green video, so that was, that was a nice touch. I love yeah. that. I love the growing mushrooms all over the place. And it's not just, you know, a couple random ones from before. No, it was all the mushrooms that were grown. It was yeah. amazing. I love the pathways going everywhere so much. And they did uh, request, you know, some help on the uh, pathways. Which, they did. They did. Which I do have some, uh, some help for that. Please so, share. Yeah. So using a lot more gray blocks instead of just the normal cobble mossy stone, m cobble moss stone, words are hard. So stuff like andesite, normal, uh, normal cobblestone, uh, dead coral blocks, stuff like that is a great way to add a little texture breaking and just diversity of the gray blocks. And using leaves underground to make it look like, you know, the oh, leaves fell from the trees would yeah. be great. I mentioned this last round, adding buttons underground to make it look like rocks. Like stone buttons? Yes, the stone yeah. buttons. Uh, using just normal dirt, the coarse dirt and podzel to, you know, break up the dirt. That's another great way to do it. And for wood, I would use different colors of wood to uh, show aging. So, uh -huh. you know, you'll have lighter woods, darker woods, and stuff in between. That's a great way to, you know, show aging and use of the path. Thank you. Those are some excellent tips. Definitely, like, throughout the competition and throughout the time I've known you, Zoe, you've definitely been very... You've had a lot of knowledge about paths and, you know, very proud of your paths. Like, uh, on our Minecraft server, you had your Hobbit Hole builds, and the paths were so incredible. They were so detailed. They were so rich. So thank you for sharing some information there. Our next contestant is Akemi Akiko. Let's discuss Akemi's build. So Akemi did an expansion on their island village settlement kind of vibe. They included a short story that involved a couple of other characters that explained how their character arrived here and then subsequently the other characters that also have um, homes and places on this island now as part of their progression. So let's begin, um, like with every every participant today, with Janie Laney. What did you think of Akemi's island expansion? I do like the progression. Um, so I know that uh, that when Akemi had first started, um, it was a little it was a little bit different. You know, they had just pretty much been there. There wasn't a lot of things going on. But what they decided to do was they decided to use. Um, it looks like they decided to use some white terracotta. I do believe to go ahead and zone off some of the stairs going down the builds 
They did definitely make use of creating rocks out of the buttons. So that was, it was, it was really nice to see them add that touch. Um, they also did expound on the dock that they, that they were originally building. So I saw, you know, I saw that that had progressed. Um, I really do like the fact that they stuck to using uh, an area that was based on the environment. I do feel like they have one of the builds that did still keep the kind of the essence of the original build as they created more of the environment. So even though they did obviously create it, it does not look like there's like lackluster with them staying on theme. So I, I really did, I really did like it. Like I need to hire them too for a dock. Um, just, you know, if you're, <laughs> watching this right now you know i need to hire them for a dock um and then i also love when they went over to the bridge when they went over the bridge and then we had a tall nice structure and i was so i was so in awe i was like when are they gonna get to the structure when are they gonna get to the structure when are, are we gonna touch it are we gonna go in it is it livable i love the personality that they have in this build because like in the story, if I read it right, there were more people who were coming and joining the environment. And so when they walked around and showed us the builds that were for those characters, they all looked like they could be according to the personality of whoever was building them. So yeah. it looks like the style of building, at least from what I saw, was different according to the different characters that build the building. And going back to the tower, I really do like the tower. I it's a lighthouse, right? It appears I think to be. so. I just wish there was a little bit more shape at the top of the lighthouse. Oh yeah. Okay. Cuz there's a lot of you usually in a lighthouse there's a lot of function. Most of the function happens at the top of the lighthouse rather than the uh, rest of it because the rest of it's supposed to give height so that they can see out into it. It's not that much functionality between it. Most of the living space is at the top and the functionality is at the top. So it would have been more rounded and house shaped. Oh, yes. And I wish it was more like that, but I still do like it. It's still a really nice one. They, it looks like to the side there, they also built a custom mushroom that's more yeah. angled. They made the access that they added to the side of the mountain was also really well put together and it's still was really greatly integrated into the area itself. It was very well done. I liked how, you know, you were, it's easy to f go to one place to another, back into another place and all that. It was just very well done. I liked it. The, uh, the leaves growing up the side of the, uh, mountain is a great overgrowth design, along with the, uh, moss, you know, not getting rid of all the stone but you know just replacing it enough so you know there's that green on the mountain it's a beautiful build lilith lilith is yes. our last build today and then we'll reveal the grand prize winner so let's discuss lilith's build lilith expanded their um romani cart in this forest path quite extensively they told quite a story with it so let's begin with Janie laney i'd love to hear your thoughts on lilith's witch of the wood kind of build Okay, so Lilith's build got crazy, got super duper crazy wild. We finally understand a little bit more of what's going on, but then a witch decided to go ahead and fix the road. Like, yo, like, like it went from traveling on a scary road that's not a real road. Why is there no light? What's going on? Hey, stuff breaks. To all of a sudden, boom, like high class. Like it just, it really was like, oh my gosh the progression and the fact that a witch did it was actually still really cool like mm -hmm. I, I was just like it's like a witch did what huh? so, so i thought that that really um that that really added to the story i feel like how they implemented that into the story was very 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 integral into the progression so there was so instead of saying that you know just one character just decided to work very hard to go ahead and make it happen to make it look nice and stuff it was like boom no there was a witch so it added to the lore um i i really do like the usage of the signs um one of the best things that i love about this build is that 
there was a door and in front of the door it says she puzzles the door ever unsure of how to open it so i feel like there is going to be even more to this story um i think what was very important about this build is that you didn't feel a sense of completion and for me that was good um i feel like since we're supposed to be on a patio world having a sense of completion in a world that really should be infinite would suck that would be very lackluster but with this build there was still some eeriness to it we were trying to figure out is there magic are there machines what is really going on so not only did we get an upgrade to um to a few like little parts, which was the road. I mean, for me, that was really big. Um, but we also did get some questions, like what is going to end up next on this journey? Thank you, Jamie. Um, Theodora, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Lilith's witchy wood revival kind of uh, build. About this build is that with her first half, it just seemed like it was gonna be a slice of life in an adventure of a lost witch. Then come to find out there's a whole grand, grander scheme of things and a lot of questions between what type of magic is being used, what's going on, how is, there was ruins here, what, what? It took us through a loop and adventure and made us ask questions. For every question that was answered, there was another question unanswered. And then you have the whole thing like Janie was talking about with the path and how another witch was incorporated in that because she herself is, I believe she's a witch, right? A traveling believe, witch? Yeah, the, the, the character that Lilith is playing, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, so like another witch coming along, obviously probably more skilled because if uh, Lilith's character was as skilled as the one, she probably would have bippity bopped herself, you know, given her her own grand um, path without having to rely on another witch or someone else to do it. And just the story, you can tell if there's more. It's not done. Is that a door to another room? Is it a portal that needs to be opened? Or is there something trapped in there? What's going on? I know. What was this environment before? Because I, we thought it was barren. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Theodora. Zoe, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Lilith's Witch of the Woods build. It was a lovely build, to be honest. I, I loved it so much. I like how, you know, the witch repaired everything. It was very nice. And not only that, but the witch, you know, reused what was there instead of introducing or tearing down stuff. So it was one of the signs that, you know, that she just recycled yeah. all the stuff there to make, you know, a new house and the, uh, the barn area for the animals. I loved it so much. And when you went down the, uh, the pathway of the uh, road, Having the garden and the entrance to the ruins off on the sides is a great way to make the world feel more, well, like a world, you know? Because you're not just going to have endless trees. No, you're going to have, you know, especially if someone's living there, you know, they're going to build a path off somewhere. There's going to be caves everywhere. It's just a nice detail to have. Thank you so much to every single participant that submitted their round two creations. You all did an amazing job. Every single one of you scored very highly. It was a very tight race, but there was one that had just a little bit more um, in terms of score than the other entries. So let's reveal that now. Let's get a little imaginary drum roll, maybe with wavy fingers. I don't know if you're interested in wavy fingers. Yes, there we go. There we go. Oh, the VTuber, the VTuber can't do wavy fingers. It's okay. Oh, hear it, Zoe. That, that requires uh, animation skill, and I can't do that. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. We got our drum roll. We got our drum roll, and the grand prize winner of the Xbox Series S and the full year of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate provided by Xbox. Thank you so much. Is Enchanted Kitsune. Congratulations! Woo! Woo! Yay! Congrats, Enchanted. You did really, really well. Everybody did really well. But you know what? Your incredible use of custom nature and that incredible attention to the organic, natural environment really pushed it really far and your progression as well was excellent. Do you judges have anything to add or to say to Enchanted before we wrap up? I look forward to seeing more of your builds. Yes. Yes, same here. And also I love the Lord of the Rings reference that you threw in there. Oh yes, the it, it was amazing. 
I, I'm not a creative builder at all. I do not like building in creative, but you actually make me want to try. You should teach me. I, I, just, I think I just want to hire everyone. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, judges. Thank you, participants.